Hello, lacrosse friends. Welcome back to the Lacrosse All Stars North American Invitational. We are about to have the Frog Pond Maulers and the Casey Powell World Foundation meeting in the first semifinal. The winner of this game will go on to the championship to face the winner of the next game, which will be the Onondaga Redhawks and Thompson Brothers Lacrosse. It's going to be an interesting game. Semi-final matchup between these two teams. Casey Powell, dramatic win over the Young Guns last night to get here. Yeah, it was. It was uh, controversial, but uh, mostly to explain, we did check out as uh, Mullers get the first possession. And the call, it is in the final minute that a penalty shot is awarded for a two-man man call. Not the final two minutes. Austin Stotts going for the first shot, and the first goal rips it over the shoulder of Blazuti. Austin Stotts, a quick start, picking up where he left off yesterday. Had a bunch of goals in one game. It's dominant frog pond offense. And quick explanation is that... Uh, Sorry, trying to deal with a little paperwork here. The uh, quick explanation is that the pe the wording of the rule is if there isn't time to serve a penalty, a penalty shot will be awarded. So it is not two minutes as usual, it's one minute because the penalties are one minute here. Austin Stotts knocked to the ground, pummeled as you said in the last game, which I thought was quite apt. <laughs> Ball bounces loose, scooped up there by Billy and Guyan. They're going to say loose ball push because he hadn't protected it yet. And there's a shot from Bombery. Blazuti bounces on that after it rang off the post. Still loose on the ground. Battling for it there is Jerry McNeff. Casey Powell comes up with it. And we're going to head the other way. This is Martin Bowes. He has been dominant in this tournament for Casey Powell. Such a central force for that team, including the winning goal, in their round of 16, and then the huge goal to tie it up in the quarterfinals last night. There's a diving attempt. That one doesn't work, and the Mullers looking ahead. A shot coming, bounces wide, and Jerry Stotts was directing traffic as he ran the floor. Too many men call coming against Casey Powell. Can't make those miscues in a game like this. Austin Stotts wondering why play was blown down as he didn't feel that uh, Casey Powell had yet gained control of the ball, which is what will stop play, or if it goes out of play, or the 30-second clock expires. He didn't think any of those things had happened. Davis Jacobs will be down on the goal line on the near side. Austin Stotts up from him. That's Danton Miller at the top. To Stotts. Bombery shoots, scores. Rocket to the top corner. 2-0, already five minutes into the game. This game is flying by. Great start for Frog Pond. Brent Bombery with a phenomenal release there. Not much Blasuti can do. And Blasuti got pummeled by the Stingers in game one back on Thursday. And so far, Frog Pond off to a really quick start. At the faceoff dot, a clean win for Nkai, but he runs past the ball. Spinning move there by Tyson Bomberry. Sorry, actually, we're going three periods. So there are three 12 minute periods. That's why it seemed like he was going so fast. There's a shot by Bomberry. That one's stopped by Blue Zuti. Behind the back, that one goes wide and will bounce up out of play and might come up to us. Oh, needed a little bigger bounce off the floor. And you might have been able to reach and grab that one, Tom. It's like a kid catching a foul ball at a baseball game. <laughs> it's exciting, right? You hear a little chuckle in the background from our producer and cameraman, John Galvin. Doing a great job all weekend long. Really enjoying having him on board. He makes us look good. <laughs> and that's not easy. Here comes the Frog Pond Maulers. Shovel ahead to Danton Miller. Jerry Stotts will stay up and play offense. Austin Stotts will take the ball. Stotts ducks underneath, shoots, save, either by Blazuti or his post. Either way, it stays out. Scooped up by Bose. He's going for a run. Bose is playing all over, going back and playing some defense. A huge transition role for him. 
He steps back out behind the back. Whiteway spins and flicks it backwards, but the save by Warren Hill, who was ready for it. Brendan Bomber, he gets a pick from Austin Stotts, shoots over and scores. Almost a replica of the spot his last goal went, although last time it was on the power play. This time it was the pick by Austin Stotts that opened up the space. Humberry already with two goals in this game. He scored the last two for Frog Pond, and their offense is looking really good early on. Casey Powell, they're going to have to find a way to get some points on the board. This Frog Pond offense, they have too many skill players. And when they get going, they just, they, they've just they got that skill set and they have such a team, fam, almost family mentality that, I mean, there are a lot of family members that have been put together for this team that they really get rolling and have fun. And if they're having fun and get running on you, it's hard to stop them. <clears throat> Little cut underneath. Nice strip, though. Terrific defensive play there by Tyson Bomberry. The ball's still on the ground. Warren Hill's trying to rake it out of the pile. It bounces and does come out to Hill. He makes the outlet pass to Brendan Bomberry. Bomberry with the last two goals. Stotts taking a bit of a beating inside. He'll come and set a pick. There's a shot by Stotts and he's got his second of the game as well. And it is the dynamic duo of Stotts and Bomberry with a pair each. Stotts and Bomberry, the dynamic duo that is. Stamper, they're looking really good to start. Though That duo is nearly impossible to stop for Frog Pond. Yeah, I mean, Austin Stott is just, he's just a man playing among men, even though he's only 19 years old. And uh, he just, he will go in, he'll take the beating, he and Evan Cree having a good laugh. Evan Cree of traditional lacrosse, uh, Makes some terrific wooden sticks. A lot, a couple of wooden stick makers here. Of course, it's Wooden Stick Festival this week. Mike Thompson here just was feeling one of his new sticks he just finished up. Beautiful work. Casey Powell gets possession. They need to make something happen soon. Billy and Guyan passes across. There's Martin Bowes. He's just going to rip it himself. What a shot. The Brendan Bomberry shots were beautiful, but that one was from further out and just as hard and precise. Yeah, and a much-needed goal there for Bomberry. He, uh... Really good release and good timing as well with that. 5.03 to go. Casey Powell finally on the board as they trail the Frog Pond Maulers 4-1. to one. And if Casey Powell is going to come back into this game, I imagine Martin Bowes will play a big role up and down the floor. They're going to need Martin Ricosi getting rolling as well. I'm actually trying to see. I don't know if Martin Ricosi is actually here for this game. He might have had to leave. I do not see him on the, in the lineup. Backhand pass, or behind the head pass by Bomber. He gets away, and Blazuti's going to go play it. And Ashton Jacobs runs into Blazuti. Now, he didn't run over the goalie. There's Scott. Shoots stop by Blazuti. And Aston Jacobs is a physical player, but showed a bit of restraint with Blizzity there. Stotts wants a pick. He goes back door to Bomberry, but it's just a little bit too high. Bomberry shooting before he had it in the stick. There's a shot and a goal. That is Jerry McNeff, who just runs off the pick in out of the corner and buries it low past Blizzuti. And boy. Frog Pond are on a roll. Five goals in the first eight and a half minutes of this game. Just a good job breaking down that Casey Powell defense and finding their way to the back of the net yet again. Austin Stotts working around the top. He's got a double team. Bomber with the toe drag and... <laughs> That is three goals that if you put laid pictures of them, of where they went, a graph, one over the other, it would almost be a perfect circle. <laughs> Frog Pond is really bringing it to Casey Powell right now. Six to one. And <laughs> I, mean, I can say I kind of saw this coming. Frog Pond is just really, really good. 
Yeah, I mean, Frog Pond is just a dominating force. And the Casey Powell team, again, not really a team in the traditional sense. They've been bringing some guys together, but they don't have the kind of experience together as that shot gets up into the rafters that uh, a lot of these frog pond maulers do having played together growing up many of them but uh, you know I, I, that experience and the cohesiveness helps also a ton of talent for the maulers Dempster coming out of the corner tries to make a pass through that's knocked down Tyson Bomberry pass ahead Brendan Bomberry all alone and he misses by about two inches, which is enough to put it up off the crossbar. I figure, I don't know if he's going to shoot anywhere else until he gets stopped. The crossbar did stop him that time, but he might just go back to that spot. Austin Stotts has it. Feeds it through to Danton Miller. That one's right in the chest, just under the throat of Blazuti. But there's Brendan Bomberry to get it back. And right now the Maulers are winning not only the scoring battle, they're winning every loose ball battle, they're winning every race, they're winning every facet of the game. And Stotts knocks down Blazuti's pass out front. And Tyson Murray, oh, huge save by the arm of Blazuti. Don't know how he saved that. Is there too many men call? Palmer Funkenhauser with a very clear explanation. They're saying, how is that too many? And they said, you had you had a guy right here that was your sixth player. He just ran off the floor. <laughs> Making it quite clear that he saw that it wasn't just a, a tight change. They actually had six guys involved in the play. So Frog Pond, as if they need any help in the final minute of the first period, are going to the power play. McNeff up to Stotts. Behind the back. What a hard pass, but it's picked off by Chad Thompson. CP running onto it, but Brendan Bombery comes back with the hard back check and makes a long pass up ahead. All of a sudden, it's a 4 one What a catch! Holy cow, Jerry McNeff scooping that off the turf. Gets it back, shoots, scores in the Brendan Bombery spot. Goal number two for Jerry McNeff. Whoa. And Blasuti, he's seeing so many shots left, right, and he talked about these shots are falling <laughs> in a complete circle for Frog Pond. Blasuti has his hands full. Yeah, I mean, that one was a, maybe an inch or two lower than the Bombery shots, which, again, could have been, like, right on top of each other. Would have looked like one ball. This might have looked like an eclipse with another ball just down below it. But 7-1 to one after one period of play. We are playing three periods here, and if they keep going like this for the Maulers, it could be a pretty long game for the CP. It be a pretty Foundation. high score for them, too. Yeah. I'm Stephen Stamp. This is Tom Scavetta. We are produced, and camera work. Coming by John Galvin. We'll take a break and we'll be back with the second period. Hello, lacrosse friends. Welcome back to the Onondaga Nation Pavilion Fieldhouse. I still think a pavilion works, but it is the fieldhouse. It is 7-1 to one for the Frog Pond Maulers over the Casey Powell World Foundation. I'm Stephen Stamp, joined by Tom Scavetta and Scavs. At this rate, it would be 21-3 to three Yeah, through three periods. <laughs> and, and don't think the Frog Pond Maulers won't do it. <laughs> Dyson Bomber, he takes the ball, runs back over center and hands it off to Rod Squire. No over and back because you have a zone to go back if you haven't established yourself towards the opposite net. Austin Stotts shot is stopped by Blazuti. That hasn't happened often. Then ball is loose. Rod Squire comes in, shoots, scores. Rod Squire, we haven't really seen much of him so far in the game, but he gets on the board and makes it 8-1 to one, just 20 seconds into the second period. 
It was really quick attack there by Frog Pond. And Casey Powell, their defense just looks stagnant right now. It's hard when you have so many skill players you're up against in Frog Pond. And, I mean, part of being successful in sports, lacrosse like any other sport, is emotion and, and drive and, and belief, confidence. And it's hard to have many of those things yeah. when you're getting pounded the way that Casey Powell Foundation is. Mercosi on the outside, pulls it down. He's watched by Case and Tar by uh, Braden Miller. That pass across, Jacobs knocks down his man, spin off the check. Jerry Stotts lobs it ahead to Brendan Bonberry. It's tipped, and that was a goal, a scoring chance saving tip by Martin Bowes coming back in de tra defense, transition defense. Now Bowes will go up and join the offense once again. A little fake there by Scrifiano. Gets it over on the near side to Dempshire. That shot was a, had a stick to stick check. Tyson Bomberry's going hard after it. Blizzuti wasn't sure, now he's gonna go out to get it. And the over and back will be called. Blizzuti has to get back. Ashton Jacobs just missed that pass or he would have had a glorious chance because Blizzuti was still reestablishing his position. Long pass ahead, there's Ricosi. He's got a cutter. Going to let him set a pick and wait for things to develop. Grant Whiteway runs across the middle. This jersey up on his kidney pads. He'll try and get by Ashton Jacobs. Jacobs grabs the shirt. No call. Ricosi gets a pick from one of his teammates. And that pick was a little aggressive for Mark R Martin Ricosi. Matt Ricosi. Sorry, I've been calling him Martin the whole game, haven't I? Matt Ricosi. I always do that. Some guy, he, he looks like a Martin, I guess. Jerry McNeff has a couple of goals, throws it out to Austin Stotts. He's got a couple of goals. He throws it to Brendan Bomber, who's got four goals. But that one not as impressive because it was probably two, three inches off to the left of where every other one of his goals was in the exact same spot. Brendan Bonberry continues to light it up. And so far, he's been the MVP of this game. It's just goal after goal after goal for him. And nothing really Casey Powell can do about it. They don't have an answer for him. They need to adjust their game plan. This is not working right now. I mean, if there even is one at this point, you're playing Frog Pond. No, I, I'm sorry. I'm laughing. It's like, what adjustment do you make? <laughs> They're ripping you apart. Um, we'll see. We'll see. We do have a player down on the CP bench sitting behind. Looking like he's in a fair bit of pain. It's like Nguyen. Yeah. He's smiling, though. I thought he was smiling, and then not smiling so much when he tries to move his leg. Here comes CP back on the offensive. We're three and a half minutes into the second period. Three 12-minute periods, running time, except for the last two minutes of the game will be stop time. Jerry Stotts just turns to face Martin Bowes. It's an over and back, and here comes Frog Pond. Rod Squire back to the man who started the rush. That goes to Austin Stotts. Backhand whip shot, Stotts is stopped. Ricosi takes the pass along the near boards. There's Bose. Reaching for the shot, then the one-hand sweep shot was Scrifiano reaching for the pass, that was. Bose takes it up around the second volleyball court. That's what the red lines are. Ricosi's shot is picked off cleanly by Brendan Bomberry, who starts to trot. Now he'll speed up as he sees Ricosi coming. Fakes, shoots. Misses, he's stopped. Brendan Bomberry is human. <laughs> he certainly had appeared superhuman up to this point of the game. Ricosi over to the far side. Grant Whiteway ripped it. Warren Hill makes the save. It's too far for him to pick up the rebound, though. Now he's going to clamp down on that loose ball and lob it ahead. Brendan Bomberry, hard pass. That one was like a speeding bullet as he Fired that ball ahead a little too much for Tyson Bomberry. Bose. He's going to get a pick from Dempshire. Kind of missed it. Cuts underneath. Shoots. Saved by Warren Hill. I thought that was squeaking through, but Hill had it in the stick right beside his foot. And here comes Kessler Doolittle back up the floor. 
There's Bomberry. <laughs> and he makes Blazuti dance like a puppet, then tucks it past him. Yeah, Frog Pond scoring is great and all, but Warren Hill's barely getting any reps. He's facing <laughs> practically no shots right now. He's probably okay with that. And another concern, they're talking to Nguyen over here. They might ice his leg up. And I heard one of the medical people saying, if they ice it, he can't return to the game. Hmm. So Well, he's walking around, seeing if yeah. he can walk it off. Sounds like a threat. Clock has stopped at 5.57 as the goalies will go and get a drink of water. Casey Powell in the building, down on the bench. Maybe he's coming in to provide a, a bit of a game plan, see what he can uh, get the guys going. I think that what they might like the most is if he put on a jersey and went out and took a few shots for him. Yeah, the score is 10 to 1. Frog yes. Pond continuing to just pour it on right now. And this is all great and all, but. Casey, Casey Powell, Powell, the uh, yeah. taper in chief of the Casey Powell World Lacrosse Foundation, comes in and gets the toe cap of Derek Blazuti taken care of. And Guyan still standing behind the bench. Now he's got some ice on, uh, they're wrapping some ice on the knee, which I guess means he is out for the game. I've never heard that, that if they, they say you ice it, you can't come back in. Maybe they're worried that since it's cold, you'd tear the muscle, which makes sense. Rod Squire passes it off. Danton Miller misses on the far side, bounces off the foot of Jerry McNeff, and will be scooped up by Evan Cree. He's going for a run. He wants a guy off the bench, throws it to him. That's Matt Ricosi. Aston Jacobs was there, though. They almost get it on the far back side to Mila. That's going to be a reset. No, there isn't going to be a reset. I thought I saw one of the officials indicate for one, but it's down to seven seconds. Backhand whip. Now there's a reset after that shot by Scrifiano. Bows just out of the stick of Brandon Spillett. But there's a goal. Backpedaling and firing. Looks like Grant Whiteway put that in. Yeah, and number three, yep. stepping back and just letting her go. It's 10 to two, cue the comeback. Much needed there. Casey Powell trying to do what they can to chip away, but Frog Pond, they just keep coming at you. Well, since we've seen Casey Powell on the Casey Powell Foundation bench, see the CP team is up one nothing. So it's a pretty positive situation for them so far. Frog Pond, though, still with that 10 to two lead in a pretty good spot. Austin Stotts takes the ball up into the off in the offensive zone, passes it to McNeff, back to Stotts, tries to swim through two players. It's not there. He's pushed back. He'll reset. Low pass picked up by McNeff. Back to Stotts. He's going to let it go. That one goes off the crossbar. Up out of play. Got through the net, and it's going to be Frog Pond Mahler's ball. McNeff to Stotts. Jacobs with the big pick. Brandon, Brendan Bomberry tries to pick up the ball after it bounced out but it goes up out of play off of Martin Bowes. Bowes is trying to take responsibility for Brendan Bomberry, and here's Jacobs. Tries to get it through to Stotts, can't connect. Bowes grabs it. It's a two on one. Look at Brendan Bomberry glide after him. Oh, nice move by Bowes, but he does trip over Tyson Bomberry. Behind the back, great save, Warren Hill. That was a terrific shot, high to low. BTB by Martin Bowes. Thought that was in. I did too, actually. I don't, <laughs> Warren Hill just clamped the arm down on his body and stopped it between the two parts. Swim move by Stotts again. Again, he steps back. <laughs> that pass is knocked down. Danton Miller picks it up, goes back to Arthur McNeff, around the world, almost takes out the referee. A reset as Evan Cree gets and flings it behind him. It's going to be tracked down there by Brandon Spillett. Spillett picks it up, 
Thought about going to Ricosi. Instead, comes out to the top. And Chad Thompson is stopped by Warren Hill, Miller, Warren Hill. You were worried about Warren Hill not getting any reps. He's getting a few more now, and he is up to the test. There's McNeff going to the net. Thought he might whip a backhand behind the back there. Instead, he throws it up top, and Squire gets it over to Stotts. In tight! And that's a lovely finish by Kessler Doolittle, the defender drafted by the Rochester Nighthawks a couple weeks ago in the NLL draft, showing that he's got some hands, too. Yeah, Doolittle with a really nice play. And Frog Pond now, after Casey Powell came onto the bench to cheer his team on, Frog, Frog Pond now responds. And they, if, as long as you have a response for everything, they'll be okay. Casey Powell, they may go on a mini search here and there, but Fro, Frog Pond, they'll have the answers. Yeah, the nine goal lead with 13, 14 minutes to play is substantial. Whiteway gives it to Ricosi. There's a quick release by Whiteway off the pass from Mila. And here come the Mullers the other way after the save was picked up. Bom Bomberry gliding down, pass to Miller. Denton Miller shot safe by the arm of Blazuti, and it's on the back side of the net. He'll just hand it off to Bowes. Doesn't have anyone to pass to, so he's going to run it up over center. Fakes a pass. Jerry Stotts watching him. Bo switches to righty for a moment. And he's going to go back to his natural lefty. Ricosi. They try the hidden ball trick. Rod Squire. Reveals it. And then the shot by Ricosi is turned aside by Hill. Nice flip pass back. But the shot turned away again. That was Kyle Devitt. Braden Miller casually runs up the floor. Braden Hill, sorry. Rod Squire working off a check. Behind the back, Austin Stotts. Blazuti has it. And Derek Blazuti is looking kind of tired, to be honest, at the moment. Let's see how many shots Frog Pond has against them. Be a really interesting number. West, I think it was at nine. See if Frog Pond can get another one here. Just 22 seconds left in the half. While Score. you're looking that up, just let you know that uh, Billy and Guyan is on the bench with his helmet off, his gloves off, and a big ice pack tape strapped on to his knee. Score should read 11 to 2 on the scoreboard. Yeah, they're just missing one. We're cozy over to the far side, white way. Bows at the top. They've got nine on the shot clock, on the game clock. Six attackers out, and a shot at the empty net. Just a little bit wide. Kessler Doolittle wanted to get in on things, get his second goal of the game. It's not going to happen, not yet anyway. It's 10-2 after two periods of play. I'm Steven Stamp with Tom Scavetta. We will take a break. We'll be back for the third and final period of this semifinal at the Lacrosse All-Stars North American Invitational.
Welcome back, lacrosse friends. I'm Stephen Stamp with Tom Scavetta. We we're just about ready for the third period. And if you're ever wondering how much does Austin Stotts love the game of lacrosse, here we are. It's his sixth game in three days. He's played a full summer season. He's going to be playing again. Uh, he's playing at Onondaga Community College. He plays lacrosse all the time. And between periods, there's about a minute and a half break, two minute break. He's out there working on his shot. He and uh, Tyson Bombery get out, take some shots. He's just having fun out there. This yep. kid loves the game and has been playing it exceptionally well since he was just a youngster. 28 shots for the Frog Pond Maulers. They lead 11 to 2. That's a three, three, 393 shooting percentage. That's not bad. That's phenomenal. Casey Powell has has possession off the opening faceoff of the third period. Bows with the shot. That goes wide. That's going to come and bounce right almost out of play. Does go back over center at least. And it will be Frog Pond possession. There's Brendan Bomberry. Austin Stotts comes up with him. Danton Miller takes the bounce pass. Looked like he might shoot, but he's going to pull it back out. There's Doolittle. He rips one, but there's a bit of a check by Evan Cree. And the ball comes back out to Bomberry. McNeff to Stotts. Oh, my goodness. That is a cheeky little shot by Austin Stotts, who reaches around defender Martin Bowes to use the screen. Blazuti never saw that. This weekend, a few times I've said, your stick has eyes. Your stick sees has different eyes than you do. It can see things you can't. I don't know how. Austin Stoss did not see where he was shooting that ball, but he knew where he was putting it and bounces it in off the post. I don't know how he had the vision for that. But he finds the back of the net regardless. That's what I'm saying. He, he, doesn't have the, he doesn't see it. He just senses it where it is. I mean, that's gorgeous, right? Yeah. Ashton Jacobs comes out with it. But yeah, you know, that's, wow, that's amazing what this kid does. And there's Stotts again. He's going to run back and play defense. Here's a chance for a cozy shoot saved by Warren Hill. Jerry Stotts running the floor, gives it off to Austin. Austin with the pick from Jerry. Behind the back by Rod Squire. Ashton Jacobs grabs that rebound. Nice defensive effort there by Evan Cree. But they still maintain possession. And Brendan Bomberry uses his strength to drive through his defender. His agility to spin 180 degrees or 360 degrees. And his reach to get up the ball up and over Blazuti. And his skill to tuck it back into his favorite spot in the top right corner. It's crazy how... The intensity here, you see Casey Powell, they've picked up their intensity a little bit, but when you're down 10 goals with just a little under nine and a half minutes left, these Frog Pond Maulers look to be headed towards the championship game later on tonight. Danton Miller going to the net. His shot stopped by Blizzuti. It's going to be interesting. The next game is the um, Onondaga Redhawks and the Thompson Brothers lacrosse. That should be a good game. Onondaga is going to give them a good run. Everyone thinks Thompson's going to win. But Onondaga, I know, believes that they can do some pretty good things. That ball picked up by Kareem Road. No, Chris Rosenthal. Sorry. Mixing up my players from different teams again. Rosenthal hands it off to Bose. Not sure what that call was. Play stopped. Now it restarts. And we are underway. Bows. Hard sidearm pass. Whiteway is going to get a shot. No, he's going to throw it up top to a cozy hole shoot. That one's blocked. Picked off. And Rod Squire is off all alone. Running hard. Being chased for cozy. Squire may have heard footsteps, but he is stopped by Blazuti. Ball comes back to the Maulers. Davis Jacobs will take possession. It's over to Rod Squire. 
Squire to Davis Jacobs. Fakes, shoots, save Blazuti. Jacobs goes after it along the boards. Gets the ball. He's checked there. Cuts, brings it out to Austin Stotts. Fake, throws it over to Bomberry. Bomberry slows things down a bit. Being checked by Ricosi. Davis Jacobs to Stotts. Tried the reverse. Little push shot <laughs> through the wickets. But Blazuti got just enough of it. There's Stotts. He's got bows on him. Goes to the net. Jumps. Tries the one-hand tuck shot. Doesn't get it. And Evan Cree will take possession and move the ball up the floor for Casey Powell. Casey Powell needs to try to get something going here. Martin Bowes running in. Toe drag. Tries to get around Stotts. Flips it behind the back high. And that one's picked off by Jacobs. And here comes Austin Stotts. What will he do? He's going to stop and shoot, and it's stopped by Plazuti. I was waiting for something kind of sensational. There's a quick release, goes off, and it's a reset as it goes off the crossbar, I believe. Rosenthal will put the ball down, and there's the pass out to McNaff. He misses, Evan Cree trying to get position, and it grabs on to Danton Miller. That one's gonna come down, it's an over and back. Austin Stotts is staying there as a touch, and. I thought it was fairly clear there was, but it's going to be a goal the other way. Tim O'Connor breaking down and scoring. And he's getting an explanation. I believe what they're saying is that... I don't know. Are they saying Casey Powell team didn't touch it? I thought they touched it. But I think they maybe are saying it touched them, but that wasn't the impetus for the ball going over center. And it was knocked over by the Frog Pond Maulers. I almost called them the Frog Maulers like you'd been doing for a day or two. The Frog Pond Mullers. It's 12-3. Casey Powell gets a, ball, a goal back. Faceoff is picked up by Braden Hill. Austin Stotts. There's a chance for Tyson Bomberry. That one's going to bounce off the glass and straight out to Ashton Jacobs. There's Austin Stotts. He'll shoot, save Blazuti. Tight checking on Tyson Bomberry. Switch off the pick. And Austin Stotts has a big pick from Braden Hill. He goes through. Stotts stopped by Blazuti. That's a terrific save. Nice job by Blazuti to make some. He is looking a little shaken up or a little fatigued. And that one's in. It's Braden Hill. They're going to say no goal. What a save again by Blazuti using his body. 4.50 to go here in the third period. Evan Cree just flings it ahead because the 10 second count was getting close and he gets it through. There's a shot by Dempshire. That's stopped. And Austin Stotts is up the floor. Takes a hard shot. Evan Cree is going to track that down. Sorry, that's uh, Tim O'Connor, the last goal scorer. Rosenthal heading to the bench and Ricosi comes off the front door and takes the pass from O'Connor. He's joined by Kyle Devitt. That pass misses. Goes all, it does wind up with Warren Hill. There's the outlet pass to Jerry Stotts. He's taking off alone, but Grant Whiteway hustled back. Oh my goodness. Jerry Stotts, another defender who comes up the floor and just laces a shot. Making it 13 to three. What a play. <laughs> Frog Pond Maulers. Sorry, Casey 14 Powell. to 3. <laughs> Casey Powell had a chance down the other end to score. And then Frog Pond immediately capitalizing. Jerry Stotts getting down there for his first goal of the game. What a pass by Warren Hill with some traffic around him. Players sticking their sticks up in his face and he got it off. Ashton Jacobs loses his stick on the check. Danton Miller will put some pressure on. Here comes Casey Powell. Martin Bowes with the shot, goes wide. That's gonna get out of play into the Frog Pond bench. And they put it back into play so they can get a quick start. The pass across from Austin Fusco. Gets to Rod Squire, but his pass can't get back to him. And here comes CP the other way. Two, two. 
Ricosi tries to hit the cutting Chad Thompson, but it bounces off the wall and back to Warren Hill, and he's going to lob it ahead. There's Fusco. He's going for a run. Brendan Bomber, he's telling Fusco to go to the net. He shoots. Oh, what a save. Lazuti just clamps his legs together, leans back on the crossbar. Another few inches, and that would have been in, but he stays out. Tyson Bomber with the pickoff. Stotts tries to go to Squire, doesn't get there, so Tyson Bomber says, I'll shoot it. That one doesn't get through. Blazuti with black shirts all around him bounces one out to Martin Bose. Coming down to the final two minutes of the game, it's 13 3. We'll have no stop time. Behind the back, Dempshire is flattened. Outlet pass up to Austin Stotts. Here he comes. Saved by Blazuti. Stotts went through the crease, so he can't even go after the ball. Now he can chase the man. 150 to go. 13 to 3, Frog Pond. And what uh, an exhibition of lacrosse skill we've seen today. Phenomenal game by Frog Pond. There's a save by Warren Hill. Brendan Bomberry picks it up. Makes me wonder, you were saying, you know, that Warren Hill hadn't been challenged earlier. I wonder if you'd rather have a game like this where, you know, you run away, you get to have some fun. You, you know, it's pretty easy. Not a lot of stress, not a lot of strain. Or if you'd like to have a really challenging matchup, because they're going to be facing either Onondaga or the Thompson brothers, that is going to be a huge challenge for this team. Penalty coming to Kessler Doolittle. Illegal cross check, 113 left, so he'll spend all but the last 13 seconds of the game in the penalty box, unless CP can take advantage and get a power play goal. Casey Powell has six on the floor right now. Yes, because their goaltender is coming to the bench, which is a little strange when they're on the power play, but. <laughs> Blazuni is saying go for it go on out there I think he's good he's done Martin Bowes up top they're actually just going to have have Scriffiano stand back as a safety valve the same and a lackadaisical pass out by Braden Hill and Whiteway gets it back he shoots wide it's going to come all the way out here to Greg Mihan, Mihan. Mila, sorry. Hard shot is stopped from the stick of Chad Thompson. And Hill's just going to roll it down the floor. Frog Pond are basically done. They're just going to catch the ball when they can and throw it down the floor. I don't, don't think they intend to try and score again. There's a shot from Bose. It's going to come back, and there's where the safety valve comes into play. Scriffiano will throw it to someone and get it back. He's going to come in and take part now. Or is he? Grant Whiteway lobs it across. Shot by Ricosi. Hill, Warren Hill stops it. Ashton Jacobs is in the crease. He's going to go for a run. And maybe Kessler Doolittle didn't get my memo because he's down by the goal, the empty net. But time will run out. 14-3 to three the final. Whew. That was some kind of exhibition. Yeah. Casey Powell was just no match for Frog Pond in this game. And you brought up an interesting point, Stamper. Will this prepare them for whoever wins the Thompson Brothers on and Daga game? You know, Casey Powell, a team like this, kind of in question about being in the semifinals after last night's game with the Young Guns. So we'll see how Frog Pond performs later on tonight. I am Steven Stamp, joined by Tom Scavetta. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with more semifinal action. All of the Lazne action is brought to you by John Galvin. He is our producer and camera work. Great job by John Galvin, and thanks to him. Thanks, of course, to Lacrosse All-Stars for making this all possible. We'll be back with more action from the Lazne.